Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I'm a 25-year-old female and believe that what me and my sister, 28, had was a tight-knit bond. We did a lot of things together, even while having different friend groups. We spend a lot of time together, being there for each other and pursuing similar hobbies and such. This is when my sister met her now husband, Jackson. My sister was back in our town during her break from her first year of university and we decided to take up baking classes out of boredom. The class consisted of people of any and all age groups and everyone there was extremely friendly and sweet. That is where my sister met Jackson. Jackson seemed like an outgoing, loud guy who was like the clown of the class. He made jokes and just kept the class going when things seemed quiet. Everyone liked Jackson, or so I thought. I say this because, well, you see, like I said earlier, the class was full of people belonging to different age groups, and although everyone interacted with each other, there was a clear boundary between the younger and the older people. It was like at the end of the day, people of their age groups just interacted with each other more. This didn't seem to be the case for Jackson, however, as a few of the friends I had made their told me how Jackson tried to get very close to them, especially in a flirty manner. This made me put my guard up whenever Jackson was around, regardless of the fact that if those people were being honest or not. Jackson was around five years older than me and two years older than my sister. So when I would see them both hanging out, it made sense to me. Well, throughout the span of the course, Jackson and my sister only seemed to be friends or even acquaintances. It was only after the course finished and before my sister left for college, I heard her make plans to meet up with Jackson. I felt a little odd that my sister did not tell me about this as previously we would share everything and anything with each other. But I chalked this up to her being in college and things just becoming a little different. Well, this change kept on growing as it was my mom who told me that my sister and Jackson had been dating all throughout the college year and were coming by during my sister's college break to see us. I did not say much, even though alarm bells were ringing in my head. I just pretended to be happy for my sister all throughout the time she was here, and I thought I had done a pretty good job until my sister pulled me aside and told me that I needed to get over my crush on her boyfriend and to accept their relationship. I am dumbfounded as I try to dig further into her comment and she just tells me that Jackson has told her everything. I'm kind of in shock because why would I crush on someone that is five years older than me? I try to explain everything to my sister, convince her that what Jackson is saying is a lie, but she refuses to budge. She tells me that it's okay to develop crushes, but my reaction to them dating is showing very clearly that I'm not over the one I have on Jackson, and that is only telling me this because she would hate it to bring it up to my parents. She says this and just leaves. I wish it would have just ended here. I really do. But this is truly where it all starts. Jackson soon starts to make remarks towards me, all of them being about my body. This was all done when my sister or parents weren't around, and I was always threatened that if I ever tried to tell my parents about it, my sister and him had a very easy way to turn it around on me, and oh man, 17 years old me was terrified to hear this. All the time my sister is here, things continue to go this way before she eventually leaves for her last year of college. Around this time, I too have graduated high school, and I say plans of going to my dream college can wait. What I need to do first is find a college that is far away, and that is what I did. I got myself into the college that was the furthest from my hometown. I forcefully stayed away from my family, especially my sister, during this time period, only visiting them during summer breaks or Christmas holiday. This is only when I find out that my sister is not coming around or is going to be here for a short period of time. It hurts my heart to find my sister being so indifferent to the fact that our relationship has clearly fallen apart, but I let it go. During this time, Jackson continues to be creepy towards me.
Even though we are so far away, he sends me weird messages, comments creepy things on my Instagram posts, and my sister just labels all of this as banter. My parents still do not know any of this, and they are just extremely impressed by Jackson because on the outside, he is just a rich, successful, and charming person who owns a business. What more can parents ask for, right? Well, things go like this, and at this point, my sister and Jackson have gotten married and have moved in together. I continue my visits in this manner, and God knows how, but three years go by. I have graduated and managed to find a job in the same city as my college because I don't think I have anything to look back on in that city. I feel good about everything. My work is amazing and the friends I've made here during college and outside of it are great too. I think to myself, what else could go wrong, you know? This is all until I receive a call from my sister. She sounds very excited as she informs me that she and Jackson are planning to move to the same city as me, as she is receiving a huge promotion if she's willing to move here. Hearing this makes me feel sick in my stomach, as I instantly get a bad feeling, but I still try to sound as accommodating as I can be. Within the next two months, my sister has moved into my city along with Jackson and honestly, Things seem normal between the three of us for the first time. I'm not sure why, but Jackson acted completely normal around me, even when my sister wasn't around. And my sister, too, was very sweet to me. She went as far as to apologize to me for everything that had gone down and was hoping that we could put that behind us. I knew I had to spend a lot more time with her now, so I decided to accept her apology. We started hanging out more, and more as days passed by and my sister started opening up to me about her problems revolving around infertility. I felt terrible for her hearing this because I knew how much my sister had wanted her own children. Even when we were young, she always talked about wanting her own children. So this news broke my heart for her and made me feel terrible to know that this also affected her relationship with Jackson. My sister would talk to me about this issue of hers almost every other day, and I believed that all she needed was a shoulder to cry on, and so I always listened to her and comforted her. Well, things just go this way for the next couple of months, and it's been about eight months since my sister has settled in this city. I feel happy to know that I have a family member close to me and just continue to go on with my life. Last month, my sister sat me down to talk to me. Even though I was pretty nervous to hear her out, I thought it wouldn't be anything serious. We start talking and my sister once again starts about her infertility issues, telling me how another one of her treatments failed, and I once again start to comfort her. This time, however, she seems like she hasn't finished talking and is hesitant to say what she wants to. After beating around the bush for a while, she finally asked me if there was any way I could be a surrogate mother to her child. I am in shock to hear this, but at the same time, not too surprised. She tells me that as we are so close, I was the perfect surrogate for her baby, and at that time, I honestly agreed with everything she was saying because it all just made sense. I still told her I needed some time to think, and she somehow agreed. So I started believing her request was very much genuine and there wasn't anything selfish or just suspicious behind it. I even got a few calls from my parents who weren't being pushy but suggesting that I think over this. After a couple of weeks, I decided for the happiness of my sister, I would be the surrogate for her baby. I met up with my sister and her husband to discuss the logistics of the situation and the arrangements that needed to be made. Everything seems normal during the start as brother-in-law and sister both seem extremely happy that I even considered their offer and are very thankful for the same. I feel good about this, to be able to help my sister out and believing that this experience will bring us even closer as a family, but hell, when I hear the very first condition of my sister, my heart sank. She said she wanted me to have this baby through intercourse with my brother-in-law. When she said this, 
my brother-in-law placed his hand over mine to comfort me as my sister went on about how she knows that is my first time and brother-in-law will be good and guide me through it. I feel sick to my stomach as my sister won't shut up even though it is pretty evident from my reaction that I wasn't having any of it. My last straw was when my sister made a joke about my crush on brother-in-law and how this was like the perfect opportunity for me to experience what I have been wanting. I had it at that point, and I got up screaming at them for being horrible and collecting my things before just leaving. I am currently home as I type this, and I'm very exhausted mentally, to say the least. My sister and brother-in-law have been blowing up my phone, and I know soon my parents will follow up with the spam. I know a lot of you will say that I needed to realize this earlier, but it is only now that everything is just clicking to me now, and I still feel wrong for reacting the way I did because of how desperately my sister wants a child. So, AITA for turning down my sister to be a surrogate because she suggested I get pregnant through intercourse with her husband, who was a creep towards me all my life? As I had predicted, my phone has been blowing up with calls from my parents. My sister even decided to involve my conservative uncles, aunts, and grandparents who all side with my sister because apparently this is the natural way to give birth. And that is how God wants all his children to be born. This truly made me go, what the hell? I have ignored all their calls and texts so far because honestly, I am speechless to even think of an answer to give them. They all sound out of their minds, spamming me with all these texts. Even my sister's texts have been going from, I'm sorry, let's find another way to work this out, to... I'm going to tell the entire family what kind of a person you are within the span of hours. I'm really not sure how to go about this situation because everything just seems like a blur to me currently. Things went from going well to them crumbling down within the matter of weeks and honestly, I feel like I'm too tired to even think straight, let alone explain myself to these people. However, I do appreciate the advice, support, and understanding that you all have provided me with. I will update once I figure out what to do. Things got crazier when my cousin reached out to me. This cousin of mine had moved countries and wasn't much in contact with any of us. She called me to check up on me after she found out about the entire situation through my aunt, her mom. We talked for a while, and she confessed to me that she and brother-in-law had a similar experience when she visited our hometown during her college days. She met Jackson at a club with my sister, and he instantly started hitting on her in front of my sister. My sister seemed least bothered by it, and my cousin, feeling awkward by it, just decided to leave earlier. She told me that another few of my cousins have had similar experiences with him when they met during family gatherings and such. I feel disgusted by it, and at the same time, know what my next move should be. I thank her for informing me of this and instantly call my sister. I confront her and call her out for being a doormat, and that she can do so much more better only if she doesn't manipulate her loved ones and become a doormat to her predator of a partner. She stayed silent throughout the call and was crying throughout it. It seemed like my words truly hit her. I tell her not to contact me again, ever, that we are strangers, even if we live in the same city, and this is what she gets for picking her husband, who clearly cannot respect her or the loved ones around her. My sister starts crying harder on the call as she confesses that the only reason she did all of this was to stop her husband from sleeping with other girls, although I'm not in the mood to hear her out, but decided to continue to let her speak. She goes on to explain that her husband had told her that if she would let him sleep with me, he would stop cheating. I think she thought that confessing this would get me to give her sympathy, but at this point, I was disgusted at her, and I told her so.
I clearly told her how disappointed and disgusted I was at her for using me as some sort of bait so that she could save her marriage, which obviously did not exist. She continued to cry, and I just hung up on her. I know there is no point in talking to my parents or my relatives after they gave me their opinion, so I just blocked them. And let me tell you guys, you all were so right about it being so much better to have no family than ones who keep around just because you're scared of being alone. Thank you all for your advice. NTA, your family is disgusting for even letting this slide. Jackson sounds like a weirdo with some creepy fantasy and made up this plan to convince your poor sister to let this slide under her fragile state of mind due to her infertility. I moved back home a few years ago to take over my parents' hobby farm. My parents asked I continue to keep sheep and goat herds. Predator animals are common, so we've always had livestock guard dogs there. I have two. They're very well trained and socialized, but I don't allow dogs I don't know on the farm unless I'm there the entire time. The setup is like an H. One side is the sheep pastures barn, the other side is goats. In the middle is a gigantic fence area for the dogs where their toys, feeders, water troughs, and wading pools and dog sheds are. They can go from one pasture to the other. The gate to the dog area faces the back of the house. It was a regular garden gate, but I fixed it so predators couldn't climb over the top of it. The only space is about 8 inch gap between the top of the gate and the gate post to move the latch easily. Too small for my dogs to squeeze through, and nothing has gone through there before. One of my dogs is a male and not neutered for reasons relating to the community and us all knowing where our help has come from and are going to since those dogos perform a specific function in a farming community. Other dog is an older female and spayed. My job requires me to travel once in a while. I had a week trip about four months ago. My girlfriend invited her friend Taylor to come stay with her while I was gone. Before Taylor arrives, she asked us if there was a room she could put her dog's crate in. I told her not to bring her dog since I'd be gone. She arrives, she has her dog in a heat. My girlfriend told her she could bring her. I offered to pay for her dog to go to the local kennel since I'd be gone. My girlfriend and Taylor said I was controlling. I told them I just didn't want to leave room for issues. Day before I have to leave, Taylor let her dog out unsupervised and I caught her dog trying to squeeze through the gap of the gate. Got her dog, brought it back in, told her she either keeps her dog on the leash and supervised at all times when outside or she goes home now. My girlfriend and I fought about it again and I had to leave for my work trip before it was resolved. I asked my cousin while I was gone. He said he and his wife saw the dog on the leash. Taylor left the day I got home. Weeks later, her dog had puppies. Girlfriend admitted they only put Taylor's dog on the leash when my cousin was over and let her run the rest of the time. Her dog kept getting into the dog yard with my boy and they stopped her if they saw her. Taylor wants me to pay half of the vet bills and puppy expenses until they're homed. She's railing about me to my girlfriend about not having my dog neutered. I refuse to pay. My dogs are contained and they stayed where they are supposed to be and I told Taylor to not bring her dogs to begin with. She and my girlfriend can cover the expenses since they went behind my back. Am I in the wrong here? NTA. Is it possible that she wanted a litter of puppies side by your dog? Taylor is an entitled AH. Your girlfriend is an AH for allowing this to happen.